the, the issue is a little bit of the history lesson here. Back when I was working on Starlight Cats, uh, I was put in touch with Eric July that he wanted to work with me. And I kind of told him no. I offered I would be an art director if he wanted to look over his pages. I was doing my own thing. I told other people I didn't want to be work for hire, really. You know, um, Starlight Cats was raising more money than I was making working at DC Comics and stuff. And why would I why would I do that? So um, I had offered to do a cover also as like a peace offering, you know, because I, I really didn't want to turn Eric down down. I, I mean, I did, but I, I wanted to seem like a nice guy. And like, again, I had offered to look over stuff and kind of be like look over layouts and stuff to help. Because quite honestly, I didn't think he would have any knowledge of how to make a comic. Uh, and I really didn't think he would know if the artist was taking advantage of him or stuff. So, you know, when ISOM 2 came out or it was announced, uh, out of the blue, I get a message from Eric asking me to do a cover. You know, and I'm like, that was an, an offer a long ass time ago. I'm in the middle of my book and you're just going to come up and be like, hey, can you stop drawing in Glorious Rex 2 um, to do me a cover? Um, because, you know, and I hate that uh, when I extend an offer to do something, that's probably got like a uh, I pretend that's like milk. You know, it's got an expiration date that offer. It's not there forever. Um, but again, I put my pencil down and uh, stopped working on my book that my backers had backed to do a cover for Isom 2. We all know what's on the outside of that. I can't exactly talk about the inside of it because of the NDA, um, which I didn't really appreciate being asked to sign an NDA. But now, in hindsight, I kind of understand why he did it. Um, and when that cover came out, you know, I found out with everybody else, it was a hundred dollar cover. Did not really agree with that. That didn't sit well with me. You know, uh, had feelings about that. But again, I kind of held him back. Um, he made his money, all that stuff. So here we are putting out Inglorious Rex 2. You know, evidently I didn't side with Eric or whatever. I think I went on the stream when he was closing out Isom 2, and on stream, he kind of sandbagged me, and somebody could go find it where he was like, he sandbagged me about doing more work for him. And I'm kind of like, dude, all right. Um, yeah, why don't I go work for you and make less money, make less money than I do now? Why don't I just, you know, and go backwards and uh, do more work for you, Eric, uh, you know? How are you going to ask me on a live stream to do more work for you when you're charging $100 for a cover of mine? Did it, you get it? You know, it's kind of awkward, right? Um, so I didn't really appreciate that too, too much. So where I'm at today is like, I get, we started getting comments on our videos, wanting to know on our short videos, had nothing to do with Eric, just talking about comics. And that's what I, I would do with our short videos. We talked a lot about the American comic book industry. And uh, one of the comments was like, why aren't you talking about Eric July's success with AlphaCore? And it, well, one, because if I was to do a video about it, I would have to start talking about the standard attrition that the Ripperverse is having and how each campaign is actually making less and less than the other. But instead of giving a straight, honest answer, um, cause I, I was kind of at the point, uh, then of like, I'd rather not say, I'd rather say nothing than say something bad, you know, or apparent here. Um, so I just said, nobody's done more. He, I think they said, why aren't you helping rip reverse out? I, I, my answer and response on YouTube was nobody's done more for Eric than me when I drew him a hundred dollar cover. And I really do feel that way. I don't feel like anybody, any one artist has done more for Eric July than I have by uh, making or producing a cover which he could charge $100 for a copy of a book. I, at that point, you know, I think, I think out of every fucking artist he's hired, I probably did the most for him. That's the way I see that. Somebody's going to clip that and be like, no, you didn't. You know, Cliff Richards did the most for him. No, fucking SketchUp did the most for him. Um, 
I I gave him a hundred dollar cover to sell. Okay. <sighs> now that'll be clipped and whatever, but that was my answer. And the person didn't really argue back. It's like, oh no, I get that, but I just don't understand why you're not talking more about the success of uh whatever. Because at that point, I don't think Alpha Core was a success. I mean, it, yeah, you still hit numbers, but for me to talk about the numbers Alpha Core is hitting, I would have to say how every campaign's going down, no matter if you, even if it's a new number one, which should go up. A team book and new number one actually should be going up. The fact he's bringing in like uh, Chuck Dixon and um, the artist he did, I can't remember his name, which uh, should be going up. Better artwork, it's a team book, new number one should go up, right? Should be a jumping on point, but it seems like it's another jumping off point for people. So anyways, I got, uh, you know, this happening over here. Uh, I'm going to go into order of these events. Um, you know, speaking of the Kaba thing, <clears throat> speaking of the Kaba thing, I love how some people are like, oh, no, you see, Eric did you a favor. He made you a $100 Kaba seller. And our best people is obviously those people who are saying, we didn't buy it for your Kaba. We bought it for Cliff Richards' interiors. Then in that case, you can buy the other three Kaba's for his interiors. Why buy the $100 Kaba? Like, duh. Look, I didn't need Eric July to say that you can pay $100 for a cover of mine. I've done that shit at Marvel and DC. Um, and I don't need him to say, here's a Shane Davis $100 cover. You know, I had Yellow Flash asking me for a cover the minute he saw that $100 cover. I'm, I don't, I'm not, I, I don't need somebody to make me a $100 cover guy so everybody... Every every grifter on YouTube can come up and hire Shane Davis to do a hundred dollar cover. Uh, I was that before that, um, just with rare variants, one in tens or one in twenty five covers that Marvel and DC would do. I've never really been a fan of that shit, and uh, it's not doing me a favor because I don't plan on running up. I really don't. I have no plans of going out there and charging a hundred dollars for a cover as a pre order. OK, now, if there's an aftermarket cover from a campaign and a backer, you know, decides the market decides like, hey, this cover's going for eBay on that. And my backers are, are, are flipping my books for one hundred dollars and I put some up in my store, then it may reflect that. But I, I have that's not something I'm interested in. I'm not interested in doing a pre order item. I don't even care if the shit's printed in my garage. I don't plan on doing a pre-order item that charges $100 with my name on it. That's just not something that I drew. That's not something that I'm interested in, and it's not something that uh, I, I'm okay with. So he's not helping me out as far as i concerned. If anything, he's taking my fan base and trying to shake the money out of their fucking pockets. And uh, what I, I don't know. I, I, I have feelings about that. 